in the days of Elijah, there were 7,000 who had not bowed the knee to Baal. And this is key. And God knew that number. God knew how many there were that had not bowed the knee to Baal. You see that in 1 Kings 19.18. And Paul refers to it in Romans 11.4. Elijah thought that he was the only one left. God, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one who has been faithful to you. And now they're trying to kill me. I've been faithful. They're trying to kill me. And God encourages him and says, no, there are 7,000 who haven't bowed the knee to Baal. Elijah didn't know that there were 7,000. And God did know 7,000. He knew the number. That means he knew the number and he knew their names. God knew their names. He knew where they lived. He knew their faces. He knew their families. And an angel, angels put marks on the people of God who are under God's protection. We see that happening in Ezekiel 9, 4 and in Revelation 7, 1 through 8. The beast puts his mark on his people. God puts his mark on his people. The beast says, I want the, the mark of the beast 666 to put, be put on the right hand or on the forehead. This is where the law of God in Deuteronomy, the law of God was to be bound on your right hand or on your forehead. So this is a counterfeit religion. This is a false religion. This is idolatry, an, an idol wanting to, be, to occupy the place of Jehovah. So God knows how to mark his people. God knows how to mark his people. He knows how to mark his people for protection. And that mark is faith. That mark is trust in Christ. When you turn to Christ, when you trust yourself to Christ, when you resort to Christ, he is your fortress. Only Christ can be your fortress in a time like this. Where can you go? Where, can you, where could you go to opt out of what's going on around us? Do you see the lords of this earth, small l, the aspiring lords of this earth, want to run everything. They want to run everything. They want to control all information. They want to control all the stories. The inventions we have are remarkable. I've got an uh, iPhone here that can connect to virtually any library in the world, right? So I've got this device in my pocket and the totalitarian lords of this earth want to control what goes into that phone and what goes out of that phone. They want to control it all. And I can't, I can't protect myself by figuring out what their master plan is. I can't protect myself by going in for conspiracy theories. I can't protect myself by moving, you know, quick, run around uh, wildly. N none of that is a protection. God's people are protected when they worship him, when they turn to Christ. And you can turn to Christ wherever you are. You can be locked up in a dungeon and turn to Christ. You can be in a prison camp and turn to Christ. You can be in a safe suburban home and turn to Christ. You, you, and this is what you must do. The only way to opt out of the world system, which includes all the judgments that are coming, and make no mistake, there are judgments coming. God did not, God does not say, oh, judgment, that's an old covenant thing, or that's an old testament thing. The Bible tells us repeatedly that God works this way through all of human history. God is in heaven, he does as he pleases. God always hates sin, and he always deals with it. He doesn't deal with it on our timetable. He doesn't deal with it according to our methods, but he deals with it. And when we see that coming by faith, when we see that coming, we need to opt out of the world system through the saving expedient of belonging to a different world. This world is under judgment. We need to belong to a different world. This race of Adam is under judgment. We need a new Adam. We need a new head. We need, a, we need a new human race. This world, this new world, is the work of Christ. This new world is the work of Christ. In Revelation 21, 5, it says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Jesus Christ makes all things new. If you want to be made new, along with all things, resort to him, come to him. That new world is taking shape here in the midst of the shambolic ruins of the old world. But in the meantime, you need to know that the angel of the Lord has put his mark on you. And that means it has to be all about Christ. That mark has to be Christ. That mark has to be blood. That mark has to be what Jesus Christ did on the cross. So. 
You turn to him in faith and you ask him to mark you. You can't mark yourself for him. You turn to him and ask him to mark you. You ask him to protect you. These are our true words, which they must be. That's because they are the words of Christ. These are troubled times. You are alive in troubled times. But as we sing in Psalm 20, the Lord keep thee in troubled times. That's where we are. You have Psalms. You have the word. You have Christ. You have forgiveness. You, you have the word of God over against the words of men. Men are liars. God, let, let God be true and every man a liar. God is the one who has spoken a sure word. These are troubled times, and there really is only one refuge. Come to Christ. Come to Christ. If you're a Christian, keep coming to Christ. If you're not a Christian, come to Christ. Turn to him. Call out to him. And he has made a way for you to come to the Father through him.